Hi, I'm Anna Mills, and I've taught English at community colleges in the San Francisco Bay Area since 2005. Um, I want to share with you my thinking about why I'm going to pilot this um, supplementary AI feedback app in the fall and why I want to invite your input on it and, and see if others are interested in piloting it. Um, so little background. Um, I come from the open educational resources world. I um, wrote a textbook that is hosted on LibreTex. It's called How Arguments Work. And um, through the nonprofit organization LibreTex that hosts free textbooks, I met um, Eric Keen, who is the um, software engineer who developed the, the LibreTex homework system and found that he was working on an AI um app for writing feedback for students um so that's how i came to this so i've been working with him and advising him and it's just kind of a passion project for both of us um because i i really want to see any pedagogical uses of ai be accessible to all students so that students aren't hitting a paywall um and i also know because i really got into AI and I ended up consulting for OpenAI and testing um, their newest model, GPT-4, before it was released. I know that that most recent model that costs is actually significantly better than the free version. Um, so I wanted students to have access to that. Um, so I'm exploring this as um, a possible pedagogical application. Now, why do we really need to teach with AI? We don't need to teach with AI necessarily. It's not necessarily the best because it's the shiny new thing. Um, but we do know that students need to learn about AI at this point um, because it's so ubiquitous, um, because they're going to be interacting with it in their working lives, um, and they probably already are interacting with it. Um, so students need to know what is um, generative AI and what isn't it, um, how to approach its outputs critically and skeptically, and I hope, you know, what is its place in a power structure, what are the financial incentives and the hype, um, and also how could we as citizens, um, both instructors and students, um, or as participants in the public sphere, um, shape the future of AI and think about how we might want to regulate it. Um, so all those questions, I think, are definitely uh, ones we should be bringing up in the classroom as we teach writing. Um, so if we're going to be teaching these critical perspectives on AI as a part of um, digital literacy going forward, I think it, it may also make sense to have students trying AI and thinking about different kinds of uses of AI um, at the same time. So the reason I think that we might want to be part of, of how students experiment with AI is partly because um, I had a little bit of a light bulb moment listening to English professor Kyle Booten talk about um, how he uses AI and how um, not just AI, but any computer algorithm can be used to, um, to try to skip thinking, but it could also be used to try to push our thinking and to actually try to get us to think more. Um, and so that made me interested in what kinds of uses of AI um, would stimulate learning, would stimulate student thinking and sense of agency around their own ideas and their own words. Um, and if that's something that we have a role in is sort of to introduce um, the kinds of uses that that are not going to just be surrendered to the bots and let them do your work right um, so and to do that we kind of need some scaffolding and some guardrails on the ai and some guidance as to how do you approach it what do you use it for what kinds of prompts do you give it um, and as a writing teacher of course um, or not necessarily, of course, but I am deeply committed to the idea of the writing process as a way to stimulate thinking, as a way to help us, um, as a way that I try to think more deeply, and also to the to writing as a form of human communication. Um, 
I don't want to give that up. I don't think that AI can just produce a writing product and that's all we need. No, we need to think through our ideas and share them with other humans. Um, and so teaching of writing should still emphasize teacher and tutor and peer feedback um, because where's the meaning in the writing without those? Um, but I, all, I do think there's some space, there's some need for more feedback than humans can even necessarily give. Um, so that's what I'm exploring here is the idea of supplemental formative AI feedback, not AI telling them uh, what grade they should get, but, um, you know, feedback on a draft on a specific issue that they're concerned about. Um, and the idea that, you know, I could ask AI 10 times for the same kind of feedback or, you know, I'm not going to exhaust the AI, right? And it's not going to be shut down at midnight when I really need it. Um, and also, um, unlike a tutoring session, you know, the, the interaction with the AI might be a time when the writer really has some control and some empowerment around what question do I want to ask it? Um, what do I want to focus on right now? Is it grammar? Do I just need encouragement? Do I just want to talk about my thesis? Um, so there's that element of, of control. Um, and there are definitely risks. Um, so I've experimented with this a fair amount and I've seen some feedback from, from even the more advanced AI system, uh, GPT-4, that, that is really not the best advice um or maybe it's misinterpreted a part of the student misinterpreted a part of the student's essay um and the danger there is that language models like chat gpt gpt4 can sound extremely plausible and authoritative even when they're wrong right um so that's you know could be intimidating it could be hard for students to recognize when those models are wrong um but I, I do think it's an opportunity to learn that they can be wrong and to see that sometimes the student is right and the model is wrong, and that could be empowering. If we as teachers set up the, the opportunity to practice and, and make sure that students are, are identifying some things they don't agree with in the feedback, um, or you know something that doesn't reflect what they wanted to do with the essay, you know, I'm not going in that direction, or, um, that's not that's not what I wanted to focus on, right? So I think there's an opportunity, even though the feedback is going to be imperfect, and in, in some ways, because it's going to be imperfect, it could be empowering around our, our human intent and, and thinking. So this is the app that I'm advising on. It's called myessayfeedback.ai. Um, this is the landing page. And, um, you know, the basic thing you do is you paste in or upload an essay or part of an essay, and then you tell it what kind of feedback you want. Um, you can select from these um, feedback types that that mostly I've written, and I think Eric has written some, or you can write your own. Describe the kind of feedback you want based on how you've crafted your assignment. Um, and then you get these suggestions. And what you get is sort of what Eric calls chat GPT in the box, um, meaning that once you get the feedback, you can continue the conversation um, and you can ask a follow-up question. Um, so here's just a basic sample that I thought was useful. Um, I gave it a student essay that's part of my textbook that's, um, so I have permission and um, I asked it for feedback on what could be clarified, and you'll see it says readers might question who the target audience was for these posters during World War I and how that audience has changed over time. Your essay hints at the differences between then and now, but consider discussing the shifts and implications more thoroughly. And you see it's selected a relevant quote from the student essay I asked it to quote. Um, and it has picked out a quote that fits with its request for clarity and that illustrates it. Um, so this is not generic feedback that's just copied from the internet. This is very specific to the text I've given it. 
Um, here are a couple more examples of uh, feedback that I thought was useful, um, asking for clarification. Um, so you see it's kind of summarize, summarizing the student's um, essay um, and referring to how what readers might benefit from um, and what readers might wonder about. And um, the other use I'm really excited about is the idea of um, having it generate a reverse outline. So the student could give their essay to the system and it's going to create an outline of that essay. And then that allows them to check if they have um, communicated what they wanted to in terms of the structure, if, um, if they have evidence for each topic sentence. Um, if the thesis is coming across clearly. Um, so it's a way to sort of reflect back on their own structure. And this is just very labor intensive to get peers to do or for uh, a teacher to do, uh, to do a reverse outline. But that's something that the AI can offer really quickly. Um, of course, it might not be exactly accurate. It might get something wrong. It might uh, reflect the essay in some way that's not perfect. And, and so it, it offers a note to the student to remind them of that as well. Um, and I think I mentioned that um, the instructor can write the feedback requests, um, create customized ones, and they can also, um, you know, allow the student to, to experiment with their own request for feedback as the student sort of gets the instructor's feedback and then has this dialogue with the chat bot. But um, the chat system is instructed not to suggest revisions or suggest wording or to feed paragraphs to the student. So this is very different than just working straight with chat GPT. Um, and there's also the opportunity to ask for the instructor's input. If they're seeing some feedback from the system and they're not sure if it's good, or if they have a question about it, they can then sort of ping the instructor through the app. Um, and I think I mentioned, you know, that that it, we're trying to build in reminders to question the AI and check with peers and instructor and the instructor and tutors um, to sort of help students, you know, see the context within writing as human communication as a chance to extend their thinking. Um, and so if you are interested in piloting this, um, you can check it out at myessayfeedback.ai. Um, or if you have input, you think it's a terrible idea, please let us know. Um, so Eric Keen is the developer and he will respond if you fill out the registration form. Um, at this point, there's no cost through the fall because OpenAI has granted some credits um we do have gpt4 that more advanced system on the back end um because openai has granted those credits um and also the system allows you to create an assignment for your class and sync that with your learning management system so that's kind of a nice convenience feature um so i hope that you will get in touch with ideas about this um here's my email and here's my twitter and these slides are at uh, bit.ly slash AI writing feedback. Thanks for listening.